on what I think is one of the most important books that has been uh, produced in the United States called The Conservative Mind, written by a professor of mine at Central Michigan University in 1973, very, very long time ago. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I mean, you knew you this know, guy. You were telling me on the way as I was coming in here that you actually were at a Philadelphia Society uh, a dinner banquet, yep. sitting at the table with Ken Crib and and um, William Rusher, William Rusher and National Annette Review. Kirk, while yeah. Russell was up there talking, uh, gave a, a lecture about the moral imagination. Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, yeah. so let's talk about who Russell is. I, uh, uh, people who are are knowledgeable about conservative thought, of course, know him inside and out. Sure, usually. he's the prophet of conservatism, is what Reagan called him. He 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 published a book at age thirty two called The Conservative Mind, and in it he was one of the first to say that the body of thought that is opposed to, say, liberal, 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 the liberal ideology of the day, which went well before uh, the FDR and the progressive era, that that body of thought that embraced uh, uh, respect for uh, tradition, custom, uh, all of that was should be called conservatism, mm -hmm. and that that label caught fire. Uh, William F. Buckley had started started his magazine right after the publication of the Conservative Minds, and and uh, Kirk was in addition to being responsible for or partly responsible for the Reagan Revolution, the the Goldwater uh, triumph could never have taken place without Russell and and the others. The triumph. The, well, <laughs> well they, they say that well, Goldwater we, actually won the election, but it just took him 16 years to count all the votes, right? <laughs> and I would point out changed. that Mark Levin, Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, they never mention Russell Kirk. This is the only show where you will get a cogent argument out of why he is one of the pillars of yeah. conservative thought. Well, yeah, you'll never definitely. hear him mention Robert Nisbet, Richard Weaver, Irving yeah. Babbitt. I mean, these guys... Look, th these men are pre-political men. These are the yeah. philosophers, and it and the Limbaugh and the rest you mean of these Kirk, Kirk, Nisbet, yeah, Kirk, the Nisbet, Weaver. The thinkers, these guys are yeah. the thinkers. These are the philosophers, yeah. and then what ends up ends up happening? And this is the process of a of a, a political movement. The philosophers create the ideas, then the pamphleteers go, "Hey, they're making yeah. a little bit of sense," and then they popularize the ideas. The pamphleteers like Limbaugh and and writers, and hopefully someday Christian will be uh, po uh, popularizing Kirk's yeah. ideas as well. But then once the mass uh, the masses, once the popular uh, becomes popular with the people, yeah. then the politician yeah, jumps into the spotlight yeah. and grabs that all for yeah. themselves. So these men, uh, and this is a real struggle for uh, the conservative movement, whether it be the Tea Party movement or the rank-and-file Republicans, they're really struggling today uh, to really uh, d define their principles. Yeah, and which is exactly, uh, before, before I started the show, Darren and I had several very long discussions about this. We wanted this show to help define the principles that the new emerging conservative majority, I guess we could say, sponsored in large part by the Tea Parties. Yeah, give them some more, more, more depth and breadth than just the yeah. daily talking points du jour. And the, the standard now that is widely uh, distributed is r the 1993 version in Russell's outstanding book called The Politics of Prudence, in which he lists 10 conservative Principles. And you can go to Kirk, kirkcenter.org Center, Kirk. and, actually, that. and yep. actually pull up the, uh, the first couple chapters. And actually, there's seven chapters yep. inside this book that are free online. Yep. So, let's, so in the last, in the last uh, paragraph of, of the Ten Principles, Russell ends by saying there's a great line of demarcation between t two, say, worlds of belief. And we could just say the, say, the liberal belief and the conservative belief. In general, liberals believe that the temporal order is the only order, that you're born and then you die, and that the only thing that is important, mainly, is satisfying your material needs, and those are your only needs. Now, on the other side, which would be the conservative side, those folks believe in, in enduring moral order, a constant human nature that doesn't change, and we have high duties, Russell calls it high duties, to the spiritual and temporal order. In general, you could say, I'd say that we believe in, in uh, divine providence or a, well, enduring order, which enduring, comes from... Enduring moral order is the term that, that Kirk uses, says, yeah, that's right. That, that comes from something much bigger and more important than us. That's right, so, he says he, he adopts uh, Burke's... Uh, idea of of a, an eternal contract, which is that we are merely stewards of our world that has been given to us, handed down 
from all of our great ancestors and that it's our job to, like a Boy Scout, leave it better than we find it. That we have, there's an yeah. internal contract between the living, the dead, and the unborn, yeah. and so we, uh, our our role is is to be yeah. reverent of the of the great institutions that have been passed to us, and that we should revere what we don't presently understand. Yeah. Okay, if you've just joined us, uh, let me remind you that we are talking right now about Russell Kirk's ten conservative principles in a discussion about the main the main body of belief that uh, that that conservatives adhere to. So let's go through them. First of all, before we get to that, quickly, let's talk about Ru- what Russell called the five opposite, ah. on the opposite side, the five uh, tenets of liberal thought. Well, and I should point out that as we talk about this, Russell said that that conservatism is not an ideology. He made it very, very oh, yeah. clear. Yeah. I mean, he used the term, the term ideology very narrowly to point out that uh, conservatism didn't possess some das Kapital or some holy yeah. writ yeah. Of, 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 of dogma that we yeah. must adhere to. He's, he, he pointed out there are contradictions it's inside a of conservatism. It's a, almost a free-floating uh, body well, of Well, free-floating is a term that gives me the willies, the willies. Jay, because frankly, what, well, what conservatism... Well, what the, what, 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 what Russell meant by conservatism are what are the ideas that have, that have proven the test of time. Yeah. And so free-floating is, is concerned because really the, the idea of conservatism is to use... adaptable. They're yeah. adaptable to time yes, and Yes, they place. are adaptable, adaptable ideas. That's right. Place. They're not yeah. some rigid ideology that we can follow with blinders. So, Absolutely. But uh, you, you mentioned that uh, after he, and he lists uh, six conservative principles uh, that are generally shared by the writers about whom he writes... Uh, in the book, the 1953 book, The Conservative Mind, but then he gets on to what is it that the liberals like? Well, they first of all believe that there's not a fixed human nature, that, as you mentioned Man, earlier, it's perfectible. It's, it's perfectible, and so they deny... And that is the fatal flaw of communism. It's a fatal flaw would... of almost any mistake that's happened to yeah. our, our social... <laughs> yeah, every page yeah. of history yeah. has written on it the folly of, of man who thinks that somehow we can create the perfect social order. Yeah. And so uh, Kirk constantly makes the, the point that, uh, a very Catholic point, very Christian point, which is that man is, it has a dualism, that we have capacity for great sin and great evil. And so... The, the progressive believes that somehow if we only get the right social order, people won't need to be good or bad, that yeah. the system will work perfectly yeah. uh, regardless. We, we believe in sin and redemption. That's right. Yep. That's exactly right. And we, we believe that there are certain normative truths, and this is the, uh, the topic that Russell takes up in the, the, his book, The Enemy of the Permanent Things, that there are certain normative beliefs that there are some behaviors better than others that... Uh, and these are the things that we talk about in terms of okay. the, the permanent things. The second thing is a contempt for tradition. Progressives oh, yeah. love tearing down tradition. Uh, yeah. Reason, impulse, and materialistic determinism are, are severally preferred yeah. as guides to so, social so welfare. So the liberals are always seeking something new, different. Oh, yeah. and they, they think love the world... to tear down old architecture. They love to demolish cities. Yeah. They love to, the fashion, clothes change by the hour. All that stuff. That's okay. right. They think the world is like a etch-a-sketch that they can just sure. turn over and start okay. constructing anew. They also are big believers in the third and fourth pointers of political leveling and economic leveling. Yeah. They believe in democracy, this universal suffrage, that everybody's opinion matters, that we, that simple majority is all that's necessary yeah. to prove a fact or prove a truth when we realize that a lot of times majorities an make old, awful mistakes. An 18-year-old's vote, a kid who, a dropout who has never lived outside of his, uh, you know, three three acres or... 30 square foot house that vote is every bit as equal to the vote of any of us or people who who own property or who have families and who have children that's right and so. russell would pick up the uh, the argument from cicero that at a time of great crisis men should be weighed rather than simply measured absolutely and okay. so uh so those are the four topics that are the four things he also you mentioned that the state uh, adopting hegel's expression that the state is uh, the only one that possesses rights that they can demolish all property rights, yeah. demolish the right of action. Uh, the state is the uh, the institution to yeah. create the eminentization yeah. of the eschaton, the final world order to bring utopia yeah. to the world. Well, of course, we know any almost attempts to try to bring heaven yeah. to earth usually results Fail. in a Fail. new uh, set yeah. of terrestrial hells. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, they, Russell uses that for terrestrial hell. <laughs> this century, the last century, has been a terrestrial hell. Okay, so. The first conservative principle is, number one, that there is an existing moral order and that we should try to uh, conform to it, observe it, and, and live it. 
right? That's exactly right. That uh, all the great religions have certain things in common. Uh, C.S. Lewis puts it under the, the heading of the Tao. The way that we should go, that the way that we should go on are exemplars. There are certain yeah. behaviors that are better than others. A yeah. certain world order, enduring moral order, that is made for men, and we are made yeah. for it. And in our culture, that could be summarized, I think, very cogently in not only the Ten Commandments, but certain traditions that have been passed on. For example, uh, men generally give deference to women when you open doors, that, all that kind of thing. Russell, there's a great quote in this essay in which he says, uh, a society in which men and women are morally adrift, ignorant of norms, will be a bad society. That's his phrase, I like that, a bad society. Okay, second, the conservative adheres to custom, convention, and continuity. It is in custom, it is custom, old custom, that enables people to live together peacefully. The destroyers of custom demolish more than they know or desire. That's right. They don't. The conservative has the always has the a sense of what are we losing in change. They are not that we are. We as and Russell makes a point constantly throughout all of his books that change is the means of our preservation. Oh yeah, we have to change. We right. We, to but change. we need to reconcile that change and reconcile must. Be, uh, excuse me. Change and permanence must be reconciled and recognized in in a vigorous yeah. society. And I think that's <laughs> actually I'm jumping ahead on you here. I so believe. he's saying not to have tradition just for the sake of tradition. Oh yeah, certain traditions uh, but, have but, to change. But of course. Certainly, uh, uh, the uh, the concept is that when it is not necessary to change, it is necessary not to change. The yeah. the, the point is that we should revere what we don't presently understand. That uh, as David Hume, a great atheist skeptic, even wrote that um, the rules of morality are not the conclusions of our reason. Yeah. Simply yeah. because we can't come up for with a yeah. reason for something doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that it isn't okay. this winnowed truth that has been handed okay. down to us okay. from our ancestors. We have about three and a half more minutes or so. The third principle is uh, that men, uh, be, we, we believe in the principle of prescription, which in half a sentence means? Means that we follow the lamp of experience, um, that... Uh, not that we're prescribing uh, Obama-mandated contraception for everybody, but rather we look to what has worked in the past, yep. and uh, we use that, let that be our guide to solving problems in the future. Okay, and fourth, principle of prudence, which is basically essentially the same kind of thing, that we need to be very aware of uh, throwing away yeah. Things. Providence yeah. moves slowly, but the devil always hurries. Uh, Burke is a brilliant uh, man that says that prudence is the first need of the statesman. And prudence means making the right decision at the right time that uh, that thinks through all of the unintended consequences that the, can come from an action. The devil always hurries. Gee, uh, pass this bill before you read this <laughs> yeah, bill. Exactly. Gee, I couldn't think of a more. Yes, absolutely. Now, the, f the, the next one is one that really, I used to uh, sit in Russell's lectures as a student, and this one really galvanized mm. my attention. He said, conservatives pay attention to the principle of variety. They, they feel affection for the prolifer pro proliferating intricacy of long-established establish social institutions and modes of life. It's quite a mouthful there, isn't there, it? That's a mouthful. It's, he uses too many big words. <laughs> but... Uh, he used to talk about the leveling effect and the homogenization of society. and he The dull conformity of the utilitarian. It, it, it killed him. If he were living today, it would kill him to, to know that you can stand on virtually any street corner in all the major cities and take a picture of uh, Best Buy, Petco, all the rest of them, McDonald's, Wendy's, and you have no idea of time or space where you are. Okay. That's right. I should also point out really quickly that that does not mean it's that he's in favor of multiculturalism. He believes that you've got to have a, a coherent set of ideas for a people to live peacefully yeah. with one another. Yeah. And now uh, the... Uh, Six, chastened yeah. by the principle of imperfectibility. I think we talked about that already. Man has a dual nature, great capacity for sin seventh, and evil. Seventh is property and freedom are closely linked. He was a, ver a strong defender of property rights, which means in turn he would have been a... He was a strong opponent of the concepts of outrageous eminent domain where the government could steal your property for... Uh, especially private uses, but even, uh, you know... Yeah, but he was not an anarchistic. He didn't think that people yeah. ought to be able to put up big billboards on their property lines advertising their new porno yeah. movie. He yeah. believed, however, that it was a powerful instrument for teaching men and women responsibility is for them to, for, for them to be able to enjoy the fruits of their labors. Yeah. And eighth... 
Eighth is that conservatives uphold voluntary community quite as they oppose involuntary or coerced he loved collectivism. The, he loved the churches. Collectivism is the thing. It yep. opposes collectivism, loves voluntary community. Okay, this has been great. You know, we are going to have to pick up parts of this in the next show because.